and preparation for all that he has for us. We welcome you tonight to Teaching Tuesday, our Bible study series. Thank you for joining us. We ask, as always, that you would share the link, that you would invite a friend to Bible study tonight. Amen? Amen. As we go before the Lord in prayer, you may turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray to you, O God. God, we thank you for your goodness. God, we just thank you for your keeping power. God, we thank you for supplying us with all that we need, O God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that directs us, O God, that helps us to be who you have created us to be. God, we just say thank you on today for this day that we have never seen before. But we thank you for the mercies that we received upon waking. God, we ask that you would carry us through this time of Teaching Tuesday, oh God. Carry us through your word, oh God. Open your word up to our hearts and our eyes that it may be implanted in our hearts so that we may not sin against it. God, we ask that you would be with our leader, Bishop Baltimore. God, give him strength, give him direction. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, we'll begin reading at verse 40 and we'll read to verse 47. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, as they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. We praise God for uh, this opportunity to gather once again to uh, have a little brief discussion on God's Word uh, to encourage hearts and believers who are with us. And we just thank God for the journey. Yes. Amen. Now, um, the Sunday past, we uh, preached and taught from uh, this text, uh, Acts chapter 2, yes. verses 42 through um, 47. Uh-huh. We wanted to go back uh, tonight. Uh, this is somewhat of an extension of Sunday's sermon, so you can go back and uh, onto our site and listen to it if you want to. But uh, after um, the service is over, uh, we thought some more about verse 42, uh-huh. uh, how important it is to the body of Christ. Amen. And particularly as we uh, say the church. Uh, so many feel uh, that the church is uh, fading away. Uh, you can read articles almost uh, daily on the falling away, and it is falling away. Uh, yes. Numbers, but the church, the church, the church, the church. That Jesus really established is still strong and operating. Amen. And I refuse to, to take the posture that we are weak. Amen. Right. Uh, we are strong, amen, in the amen. Lord. But verse 42 uh, really leaped out of my spirit uh, with fresh insight. Yeah. And I thought much about uh, Rem Rachel, how that uh, if we just focus on verse 42, we could build strong uh, churches, and, yeah. and uh, because this, if we could do four things, four things, four things, that's all. Four and it's all not right. complicated, it's easy, it's simple. Uh, if we just get on one accord. Pentecost brought uh, a spirit where people became one. Amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. 
And uh, we're now we we often see many conferences on church growth. We have conferences on how to grow a church. We have evangelism conferences. We have uh, empowerment conferences. We have uh, more excellent way conferences. Amen. And I could go on and on and on. I know I'm talking a lot today. But look at verse 42. And this was after uh, they received the word and souls were baptized, baptized and added to Jerusalem. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine that is teaching. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And uh, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Amen. Four things. Teaching, mm -hmm. yeah. fellowship, uh -huh. amen. Sharing a meal, mm -hmm. breaking bread, uh, uh, and prayer. Yeah. Those four things. Yes. If the church, as we know it, mm -hmm. would emphasize and to teach and to lift up verse 42, we build dynamic witnesses for Christ. Amen. 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 It's um, if we get back to the simplicity, the basics, the basics yes. of quote unquote the old church, um, where yes. they didn't have all of the um, extras that we have in churches now, and not to say that the church needs to be stagnant or we need to be stuck in the good old days, but there are some foundational. Um, tools that the old church stuck to That's right. that worked That's right. that allowed for the Holy Spirit to be the focus yes. and not all of the things we brought into the house of worship yes. but made it about the creator the, the reason why we're here we don't need to bring additives to the Holy Spirit wow, wow. Um, we need to make the most room and give the Holy Spirit the most freedom to do what needs to be done. Um, because those things, it's kind of how um, the Bible talks about idols that the people were making where they have eyes but cannot hear, uh, eyes but cannot see, ears but cannot hear. We bring these things into the house of the Lord, these things that we have created, these things that we have um, given an affinity to that have no power and that are distractions. And so these four things are all that we need. Now, you use an expression that some may not understand who are watching us, amen. Uh, we are uh, located here in Virginia, uh, in the United States, right outside of the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And uh, you mentioned a term of the old church, you said it several times, the old church. Uh, I use that uh, often, amen. Uh, explain what you mean, the old church, amen. 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 Um, the church of our ancestors, our forefathers, um, the church of many generations ago, um, the foundational church as we know it. Um, it was a time, a more simpler time, um, a time where people saw each other as God's creation and treated each other as such. Mm -hmm. And the house of God was sacred. And so yes. there were a lot of things that you could and could not yes. do yes. in the house of God. Um, okay. And it, it was sacred. I will, it was sacred. Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, when I say old church, I'm thinking about the church of my uh, younger years growing up where uh, it was intimate uh, gatherings of families uh, and uh, really lifting up the word of God. Uh, teaching, teaching, fellowship, uh, breaking of bread, uh, and prayers. Now, fellowship was strong uh, in the New Testament in the early church life. Fellowship, yeah. coming together, sharing with one another. 
Now, if you think that this is not important, if you think it's not important, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, look at verse 42. Now, 42, I said they continued, they kept on, they were committed, they kept themselves, amen. Uh, they were, they were, they, they were linked into uh, this whole thing of teaching, uh, fellowship, sharing a meal, and prayers. Amen. Now, uh, that seems simple, but yet it's profound and it's impactful. Amen. Uh, now, uh, uh, and to show you the results that came out of that, uh, verse 43, then fear yes. came upon every soul. When did fear come upon every soul? When they kept to teaching, committed themselves to teaching, committed themselves to fellowship, committed themselves to, to uh, sharing meal, I'm gonna keep using that word, sharing a meal, breaking the bread, and prayers. Then something happened in the lives of those believers. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, what happened, preacher? Uh, many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Only after they, they, they studied, amen, uh, remained in fellowship, breaking the bread, sharing a meal, and prayers. Mm -hmm. Now, in this day and time, uh, where we are uh, on this journey, uh, the teaching, Bible study, some call it teaching, Bible study, whatever term you use, of prayer meetings, uh, prayer gatherings, is the least attended. Amen. 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 And then we wonder why we're not seeing signs and wonders. Yes. Amen. Help me somebody. Amen. 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 And, 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 and it said, we're done through the apostles. Yeah. Sometimes, amen, we we, we may be wondering, well, why no signs and wonders uh, being done through my pastor, uh, uh, minister, whatever? Well, the question is, uh, have you been committed to right. teaching? Yes, right. Have you been committed to being in fellowship? Have you been yes. committed to sharing a meal? Yes. And have you been committed to prayers? Yes. That's when, amen, amen right. the signs and wonders happen. Yes. After we... we Become serious about these four items. Amen. Amen. I see something you want to say. Amen. Um, you know, it's like I think it boils down to can God trust you? Ooh. So why would God perform miracles, signs, and wonders through the apostle? If and that's a miracle is a great responsibility. It is not, we've talked um you know, and shared how the miracles are never just for you. Right. And so that's a great responsibility. And if you can't handle simple, and it is, it's simple, being devoted to teaching, fellowship, eating a meal together and prayer, why would God bestow upon you a miracle sign and wonder for you to take it and go about your business? Right. To never come back and be a part of the fellowship. To never come back and share it over a meal. Yeah. To never come back and thank, give God a prayer of thanks. Why would God do that? You would not give something to someone to never see them again. To never be able to see them enjoy it. To never be able to hear how it helped them. We as humans wouldn't do that. And we know we wouldn't. So how do we expect God to do that for us? I want Amen. you to read that 42nd verse one more time, and then I'll raise something else. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Now, prior to that verse, the Bible says they were saved. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. And when you become saved, somebody say amen. 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 Deliver from this perverse generation mm -hmm. that uh, King James and New King James reference. Yeah. And, and we're to, glad to receive the word baptized. They continued, they devoted themselves, and I know we're emphasizing this, to teaching, mm -hmm. fellowship, mm -hmm. sharing a meal, and prayer. 
I watched uh, an interview uh, several days ago last week, but, um, and my mind cannot recall all of it, but something caught my attention. And they were talking about, this was a, a uh, cable news channel, and they were talking about the state of affairs uh, in our society. And this particular um, um, person made a statement that really arrested my attention. And she said this, she said that uh, we thought with the coming of the internet, we would become more enlightened. I'll say that again. We thought with the coming of the internet, uh, we would become more enlightened, but now, on this side, years later, we cannot say that's true. Mm. What have happened? The breakdown of the family. Amen. Uh, uh, no longer we, we come together mm. like we used to. Amen. And I'm emphasizing this, when I say fellowship in particular, Shannon Mills. Uh, when was the last time you seen families eating together? Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Pop come in, father come in, he grabs his meal and keep on rolling. Next morning he grabs something out the door. Yeah. Children come downstairs heading to, uh, to school. Uh, they grab something and just mm -hmm. gone. Amen. Yeah. Eat in different locations yeah. amen. and we're not together. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. And then we wonder why uh, there's a disconnect yeah. between the body of Christ and earth. The same people in the church. Yes. But there's no sharing. Yes. There's no time to just share thoughts yes. Yes. Or, to, or to share uh, testimonies. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. And amen. so uh, that really hit me. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you think about it, uh, uh, it's, it's messing with our mind, uh, this whole uh, process, how we operate now. Now back to the old church way, when I grew up, and you may say this is the old timey way, but uh, I'm still rooted in uh, how I was trained and, yes. and reared uh, yes. uh, in my early years. Mm -hmm. Families ate together, Amen. And, and friends ate together, and we were on Sunday after church, we were gathering somebody's homes, all the family. Eat, and then we would have another church service in living rooms, in dining room, around the table, fellowship it. Somebody say amen. amen. And so when you hear me say some of these uh, statements, uh, I'm, I'm reflecting back. But families were strong then. Somebody say amen. 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 I even remember um, as a young girl, every Sunday, we it would be a whole herd of us going so because <laughs> we were hungry after, after we had church we were hungry so it would be a whole herd of us <laughs> and we would go right and we would go to two of our one or two of our favorite spots and we would just sit for hours and just talk over a meal about the goodness of god what happened that day at church. And as a kid, I marveled at that. And it was special um, because it's nothing like when you really take the time to get to know your community, it's special. Mm -hmm. And it really shows, your people show you who God is um, and how vast and creative and abundant he is. Um, and so we miss out on that. We've missed out on that. And we have allowed the hustle and bustle of life wow. yeah. to steer us in the wrong direction. We've allowed, got to keep up with bills. Got to make sure I don't get fired from this job. Got to make sure I go to this practice. Got to do this. Got to do that. And we've lost the main thing. Yeah. And we've got to get back as a people to an understanding that one day with the way the world is going all of this can be gone in a moment yeah. all of these yes. amenities all of these things that we just love to do yes. can be gone in a moment and then what do we have and then as it's as sad to bring up this point but the amount of divorces that were that happened when COVID happened 
when people had to just sit at home with their loved ones and all this time they realized they never knew who they were with and so we've got to get to a place where we get to know one another so that God can show us ourselves, right? It's a beautiful thing to get to know one another, but it can only you can only get the fullness of what you need from the persons that God has placed you around by his Holy Spirit. You can't do it in the flesh. You know, you know Reverend Rachel is one of a kind, isn't she? <laughs> she said, a, a whole herd of us. <laughs> Amen. Now, now she's young herself, and she said, "When I was a young girl, Amen." But she's not a girl anymore, but she remembers what happened, uh, and she brought out some important nuggets that we need to uh, hold on to. And then she really mentioned this piece of the number of high number of divorces and separation that took place during COVID when we were shut in, mm -hmm. yeah. and you would say, well, well, it looked like it would not have happened that way. Mm -hmm. But uh, folk found out they didn't like each other. Right. They found out that they were complete strangers. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't want to know, who's that stranger I'm in the house with? Right. Yeah. I don't really like this guy. Somebody mm -hmm. say amen. amen. Uh, I don't know who this woman is. Mm -hmm. And so, but the problem with that was, there was no foundation. Right. Amen. 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 Life needs foundation yes. principles. Amen. And if there have been foundational uh, principles, uh, beliefs, then all that would have happened. Amen. Let me let me press it a little further because uh, uh, I see something else out of there. Mm -hmm. Verse 47 says, praising the Lord, amen, and what? Praising God and enjoying the favor of yeah. all the people. Praising God and then having favor or enjoying the favor uh, with all the people. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that uh, the Lord added yes. daily to the church that was saved. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Now, now in the uh, fourth chapter, third chapter, uh, they were preaching and helped the layman at the temple. But in the fourth chapter, stuff happened yeah. to the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it started uh, uh, against the leaders of the church. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Not at the body level, but the leaders of the church. Yeah. Uh, the fourth chapter opens with uh, Peter and John being arrested. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And then there was a, a, a meeting of the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. Amen. That was forbidden. Uh, them to speak in the name of Jesus. Yeah. This was after all of that that, that took place in yeah. verse 42 and I'm, I'm emphasizing that uh, and, and you want to know why they could stay the course. Mm -hmm. Persecution broke out. Yeah. They were not allowed, uh, forbidden to lift the name of Jesus period. Mm -hmm. Help me somebody. Yeah. But they prayed for boldness. That's all yeah. chapter three, chapter four. Yeah. And they kept on lifting the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now the question comes to my mind, what would we do if we persecuted or life is on the line and they forbid, you're forbidden to speak the name of Jesus? Yeah. Help. help me somebody. Help. help me somebody. Yeah. Now, now back to what you said, what happened during COVID. Now again, it's foundational. Now what I'm trying to say is, and I know I'm talking a lot tonight, but what I'm trying to say is, if you get four, verse 42 together yes. and follow verse 42, then you can handle the persecution, you can handle what folk tell you not to do in Jesus' name, yeah. and you'll get boldness. And then the Bible says, again in the fourth chapter, the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul. The persecution could not separate them. Yes. Help me somebody. Yes. Tax against the leader, uh, not to talk about Jesus. They pray for boldness. And we need to pray for boldness yes. in this day. Yes. Amen. Yes. Somebody say, we, we can't be uh, silent in this day of, of demonic powers. Yes. But they, 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 they kept their faith. They were one heart, one soul. 
and then it then it'll grow on, and this is a like a, a, a re-emphasizing verse 4 re-emphasizing verse 42 through 47 in, in chapter 2 for it says amen that neither did anyone have anything he possessed was his own but they had all things common so persecution couldn't change that testimony. Yes. Are y'all with me? Amen. 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 The demonic forces that coming against them did not separate them from carrying out or executing their faith and their mission. Yes. And it says that, and with great power, the, the apostles, the same leaders, they witnessed to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great Grace broke yes. out upon them, was upon them. Yes. And emphasize again, there was, there was no one among them who lacked for all the possessors of land, houses sold them, brought the proceeds of the thing, and were laid at the, at the apostles' feet. Somebody say amen. amen. And then lies broke out in the church. Yes. But they had a foundation. Yes. They, I say it again, they had a foundation mm -hmm. that goes back to verse 42. Verse 42 again. Yes. Chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Steadfast. And to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, the eating, sharing of meals, and to prayer. They were not shaken. No. Yes. Somebody say amen. 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 That was so powerful. I don't have anything to add. Yeah, we yeah. need to. We need to eat. A, you know, I, I love in the verse in chapter four and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy persons among them. And I reflect on our ministry and how we have answered the call of missions and our ministry. Yes. And, you know, people say all these different things of what is the identifier of you having the Holy Spirit. God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy persons among them. You cannot claim yourself to be a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ oh, and never move to action yes. to make sure yes. that by any power of your own yes. that those around you are not in need, yes. whether it be spiritually, physically, mentally, we are here to take care of each other. Yeah. And if God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all, there should not be so many needy no. that are sitting right mm -hmm. in the body of Christ mm -hmm. and that are right on our doorsteps that we're looking past. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Where, where are you going this week? You, you're going to be somewhere Friday night. Let the people know where you're going to be. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We, we're proud of Reverend Rachel in this ministry. Amen. She's representing well. She's living her life. Somebody say amen. amen. And she's a great uh, lover of the Lord Jesus Christ and preacher and teacher of the gospel. So so let uh, people know where you're going to be Friday night. Friday night, I will be uh, with Dr. Kelly at Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia at 730 I will post um, the exact address information, but feel free. It is their celebration for World Children's Day that they're having at their church. And so I'm honored to be there. And we're excited for what God's going to do. Amen. Do you have a word? I have a word. All right. Come Friday night and hear it. <laughs> God bless you. And by all means, tune in with us on Sunday morning. Yes. And also, while we're announcing such events that we're having on Sunday, June 9th at 4 p.m. The date is here. Please join us at Harvest Assembly at 4 p.m. to celebrate Bishop Baltimore's birthday. It was in May. We decided we're celebrating all year. As long as he wants to, we're going to celebrate. Right. Amen. Because right. when you turn 81, you That's can do right. that. Amen. Right. So we are celebrating at 4 p.m. We will have singers we will have games we will have food we will have preaching yeah. amen so we are so excited we are preparing 
for you. So please join us at 4 p.m. at Harvest Assembly where Bishop Johnny Abram is the pastor. We will see you there on now, Sunday. Now, when was my birthday? You're, well, that, I can't give that away because that is a part of something special we oh. are doing. So if you want to know what Bishop's birthday was, we'll see you at 4 o'clock on Sunday. Oh. Amen? I'm even surprised by that. Amen. Amen. It will be a day of surprises. Most importantly, we will give God the glory for all he's done in Bishop's life over the years. Amen. 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 We thank you for joining us for Teaching Tuesday. We pray, pray, pray that you have been blessed, that you have been encouraged, that you have been inspired by what we've shared tonight. We pray that God's word continues to lead and guide you day by day as you grow. This is all a process of growth and transformation. We never have it perfect. We never get it all right, but we strive and we can do that by abiding by the word of God, continuing in fellowship, sharing meals with each other and praying. We will see you on Sunday. God bless you.